What's up guys? Welcome to your 149th Android tutorial for the new Boston. What we're going to do in this tutorial is basically read our code from our, our buffered reader. And we set up again our input stream reader uh, within our buffered reader and last tutorial took out that parentheses but you still want that one in there. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a string buffer to read through our input or buffer reader. And this is kind of a Java thing. Uh, so I probably won't go too much into it. I'll kind of explain what's going on. But uh, if you guys want more information, just check out probably Bucky's Java series. I'm sure he has some more stuff within within there. But I'll give you the basic concepts. So what we need to do is we need to set up our string buffer. So we're going to say string buffer. And uh, we're going to say SB. We're going to set this equal to new string buffer. And we're just going to put, uh, you know, make pretty much null. Uh, to start out with. So now what we need to do is we also need to set up a line. So we're going to say a string line for L or L for line and we're just going to set this also equal to be nothing to start with and we also want to set up basically a new line uh, type string because you know we don't want all of our data just in a paragraph where it's hard to read so we're just going to say like new line in L and we're going to set this equal to be the system dot get property and there's string properties that we can refer to we're going to refer to one called line dot separator so that's just going to separate our lines and now what we need to do is kind of like when we are processing data or re receiving data we're going to use a while loop to read all of our data and put it within our string buffer so we're just going to create a while loop And we're going to say as long as our line is equal to our buffered reader dot read line, as long as there is a line available to read, uh, we're going to we're going to read that line. So then we go within outside that parentheses, and we're going to say as long as that is not equal to be null, we're going to basically uh, read that specific line. So we're going to refer to our string buffer called sb, and we're just going to say append, which is basically going to return the value that we're reading. So we're going to say our line plus we want to add a new line when it's done reading that specific line. And that's going to loop through again and as long as there's a line available it's not equal to null it's going to append the next line and then create a new line and do that over and over until you know it's read through the whole document. And then all we're going to do is we're going to close our buffer reader um, so we're going to just say in close. This is pretty similar to when we were working with data. This is how we kind of refer to a string buffer and then what we can do is we can set up our string buffer to equal a string of some sort. So again we set up our string in the first tutorial of you know this get method called data. So all we're going to say is data is equal to our string buffer dot to string. And then all we're going to say is return our data. Because again, this class is looking for some kind of a return method that's going to return a string. So that's what we're going to return, is the data we get from our string buffer. And then we also need to add a catch clause or a finally statement. So we're just going to say finally. And we're going to say, and we're going to just make sure our, our buffered reader is closed. Again, we're just going to say if, like, uh, you know, in is not equal to null which you know for the most part it should have already been closed but if it wasn't closed that's most likely means that it's still not equal to null so we're just gonna force close it so we're just gonna say again like try and then in dot close and then we're just gonna return return data as well because hopefully we got some sort of data attached and then also we're gonna add a catch clause and we're just gonna say catch um, like an exception E and then we're just gonna print that to the stack trace again we're pretty familiar with that and there we go we pretty much have everything set up now let's just kinda of test this make sure it works so we're gonna go back over to our HTTP example class and all we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a new uh, git method that we just created ex we're gonna call this test something like that and this is gonna be equal to new get method ex 
um, and then we can use that method so we're going to say test or we can set up a new string maybe uh, returned and we're going to set this equal to our test dot and we have that method we just set uh, created called get internet data and that's what we're going to return to the string and then just we're just going to set our text view that we have set up to equal that string so again just HTTP stuff and we're going to say dot set text to our new string that we just created called returned and also we have to add a catch clause a try and a catch around this because again we're working with uh, you know an exception of some sort that could be thrown so what we want to do is we also want to set this uh, text within that catch clause as well so then if it doesn't get set to anything we know we have some sort of error as well uh, just always good to keep that in mind of how our application runs and if it's actually working so we're just gonna run our application and we're gonna go down to our HTTP example click that and hopefully our text view um, yeah and see our text view already changed the data and this is kinda of the stuff that we get back um, as you can see you know and we can also break this down which we'll get into later but as you can see it's kinda of nicely structured of the information that's being passed in through our website again I had that scroll view just for this reason so we can scroll through here and kinda of see some of the stuff like keywords the meta name just some of the background stuff of the website that we can read and process and access some of that information um, but that's pretty much it for the git method using the HTTP client um, we'll get into again that Twitter um, just like kind of breaking down some code a little bit better using JSON uh, in the next few tutorials but uh, just to give you guys kind of idea how to get some information with that git method through our HTTP client uh, that's how you do so so thanks again for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next tutorial